Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the total cryptocurrency market capitalization using the risk metric. We've shown this on the channel a few times. We generally don't show it on the channel when things are super bullish because that's when we, we mainly use it for the premium list. But I wanted to give you guys an update, um, kind of show where we are and, and maybe how you can use either this tool or something similar that you make up um, to help navigate the cryptocurrency market, okay? Now, if you want access to this one, remember you can check out the premium list. You can find a link to that in the description below. We have the sale on it running for um, just a couple more days. So if you guys wanna lock in the lower rate, you can. Otherwise, this is the total cryptocurrency market capitalization risk metric, okay? And it looks like the price to Bitcoin. Um, but remember, Bitcoin dominates the market, generally speaking, and so it's going to look like the price of Bitcoin. But you can see that on the y-axis, you have the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, and note that this is a logarithmic scale. The risk metric goes from zero to one, it's color-coded, uh, zero is blue, one is red. So when it's in the bluish areas, it's historically low risk. When it's in the reddish areas, it's historically high risk. So the general idea is that there's no perfect metric out there that's going to tell you exactly how to navigate the market. There's not going to be a metric that's going to tell you, you know, exactly what day every single altcoin known to man is going to, to reach its peak, at least in the short term. But we can look at long-term movements in the market, price, time, volatility, and accounting for diminishing returns to try to understand where we could be. Now, it's key to account for diminishing returns. If you do not count account for diminishing returns, then you'll never get to the highest wristbands ever again because you just simply cannot go up the same orders of magnitude that you once did because it's that much harder to move the total cryptocurrency market capitalization because it takes exponentially more volume. So this is what it looks like, okay? Now, it's hard to make sense of what's going on, again, when you're just looking at it with it being color-coded. So what we can do is we can take the color code out, look something like this. And the general strategy, I think, uh, it, you know, is, is to come up with a risk level that you're okay moving into the market with, and then one that you want to slowly sell out of the market from. So for instance, this risk metric, again, is on the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, so it's going to be fairly heavily weighted towards Bitcoin. At some point in the next few weeks, I think I'm going to make one on just the altcoin market so that the Bitcoin, the, the valuation of Bitcoin isn't affecting where we are with the altcoin market. I think this most recent move will help me establish a risk metric we can use for altcoins that also accounts for diminishing returns. Um, now, with this one, you can see that it, it came into the 0.9 to 1 wristband over here. It also did it another time a couple weeks later, but because this is only daily data, it's only, it, it only records um, you know, what happened on, by, the end of the, uh, by the end of the day, the, the closing price, the closing, the closing value for the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. So the, way I think the, the, the best way I think to navigate this is to just say, well, depending on how aggressive you want to be, if you're below a certain risk level, so let's say if the total crypto if the total cryptocurrency market capitalization risk metric is below 0.7 risk, maybe you consider that to be a time to slowly DCA into the market to a cryptocurrency of your choice. But remember, it's important to pick ones that will stand the test of time, not ones that are just chilled on Reddit that day and were probably upvoted by a lot of bots. Okay, that's that's something I want to, to make sure people understand. Picking projects that stand the test of time, uh, are it's a lot less stressful than, than picking projects that are, you know, could, could be, just go to zero. Um, so I think do your, do your research on, on which projects you wanna invest in. So maybe you, you come to the terms that, hey, you're only gonna invest in the market when it's below 0.7 risk or below 0.6 or below 0.5 or below 0.4. And maybe you'll sell when it's up in these, these regions. And you say, you know what? I don't exactly know where the top's going to be, but I do recognize that when we're in these regions, it might make sense to take some profits off the table. Now, it's not necessarily gonna help you time the exact top. The top we had here uh, is a lot different. This local top is a lot different than ones we've had in the past, but we did make it to the 0.9 to 1 wristband 
and you know it hit it relatively quickly because of how quickly things were moving up and then the, the total crypto market capitalization only marginally went up a little bit higher after that point over the span of of a couple months so generally speaking if the idea is well hey we know we're in these high risk bands for the total cryptocurrency market capitalization well how do you navigate that for each individual crypto and that's why again for the premium list we have risk metrics for every single cryptocurrency that i want to follow i should say that i want to follow so we have it for bitcoin ethereum chainlink cardano um polka dot we have it for for xrp we even have it for litecoin i'm not super bullish on litecoin I mean, the opportunity cost of holding litecoin is is really high but enough people hold it that i think it merits having a risk metric for um and then we also have it for a lot of other projects like like cosmos and um stellar lumens like xlm um, and then we're going to be introducing it probably in the next few weeks for some other cryptocurrencies like like solana ave um maker and uh Kusama, maybe a few more. So, and by the way, the risk metrics are not only against the US dollar, but also against Bitcoin and against Ethereum, depending on what, what pair you're trading, depending on what pair you're trading. So the way I use this risk metric is I just say, you know what, I, you know, if, if the risk on the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is above 0.7, I'm just simply not buying crypto, okay? I'm just simply not buying crypto. And it's difficult you know, when you're in that area to tell people that, hey, like the market's really risky because then if it goes up, which is what we all want it to go, I mean, we all want it to go up because this is when you make, you know, this is when your portfolio is balloon. A lot of people just want to get here that's only ever going to go up. And that's why I try to temper people's expectations with saying, you know, like looking at the data and showing that, hey, like coins like Ethereum don't tend to do that well in the summer. Um, and, and then also recognizing that, hey, the risk on the market is high, we need to cool off for a little bit. So if you've heard me say for a long time, the risk on the market was high, I think it makes sense we cool off for a little bit. You can see that in fact, we are cooling off for a little bit. Now, what could be interesting is that if this does end up being like a, a, a double peak cycle, uh, similar to 2013, then, then we could be coming down to, you know, to even lower risk levels. Now, does that mean the total market capitalization has to drop? No, if the total if the total crypto market cap just went sideways for six months, the risk would come down. OK, remember, it's based on price, time and volatility. We need to get accustomed to the new normal, whether that means going down and then rebounding or if it just means going sideways, it's somewhat irrelevant. We just need to, you know, I, I think it makes sense for the risk to calm down. And you can see that it has it has pulled below the 0 0.7 wristband. It's now all the way down between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 risk. So again, if you're always curious, like what is the premium list about? I always say, well, if you know, you'll you'll understand how I'm navigating these markets. Um, we have the risk metrics, we have the risk dashboard, we have the Into the Cryptoverse app where you can access the risk metrics, and it sort of tells you where we are, and you can take profits based on your own risk tolerance, um, and you know, or or you can just maybe scale into the market more when the risk is lower. And if you don't know what I mean, it means like. You know, whenever the risk comes down, whenever there's a pullback, everyone wants to just like FOMO into the market all of their money, uh, you know, when it first has this first pullback. But you could argue that having some type of discipline and, and exercising like a, a, either a static DCA strategy or a dynamic DCA strategy would not be the worst idea in the world. That way, you know, if you get below 0.7 risk, hey, at least you're moving into the market some, right? At least you're moving in some. And if it goes back up, then you're like, all right, well, it didn't go down enough for the risk to be worth it because it's not about your returns, it's about your risk adjusted returns, okay? I think there's a lot of people that, that don't really appreciate risk. The one nice thing about accounting for risk is that it, it makes it so you navigate the markets a lot better. And even with massive pullbacks, you know, it's not like you were DCing into those projects over the last month or two anyways, if you're following, say, like a certain risk metric for the total market capitalization. So even if you do get a pullback, it's not the end of the world. And then maybe if you do get a pullback, you just continue to DCA. Even if you don't want to sell, it could keep you from buying cryptocurrencies once they're up like, you know, 50x or something in the short term. So then if the risk does come down, then you continue to just DCA more into the market. So imagine you're putting in 100 a week here, and then if it comes down to this risk level, maybe you put in 200 a week. And then if it comes down here, maybe 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700. So it does take some type of discipline. And again, you you know, you know run the risk, right? The risk on the other side is, well, if it just rebounds and goes straight back up, 
then you might wish you would come in more. But again, there is an advantage to having stable coins and earning interest on your stable coins. And I think a stable coin, I think a portfolio that lacks stable coins is not a is not a very um, uh, uh, great portfolio. I think you know any good portfolio needs a certain amount of stable coins, not just because you can earn interest on stable coins, but you want to be able to take advantage of dips in the market. Okay, you want to take advantage of dips in the market. So again. If you, you know, if we look back to 2013, we can see that the risk level came back down to almost like maybe like 0.32 or so. So it came back down a little bit more before it actually turned around. But if you go back and look at, say, 2017, you can see that the risk levels turned around at this point. OK, so there's risk involved. OK, there's risk involved. And again, depending on on what your risk tolerance is. Uh, you could come in at, at either, you know, maybe below 0.7 risk. Maybe you don't even want to come in below 0.7. Maybe you want to wait, make, and make sure and wait and see that it's below 0.6. Or maybe you're even more risk averse and you want to see it below 0.4 or 0.5. Um, again, there's different strategies. And, and I think the, the, the one thing to hammer home is that with risk, it's not, it, there's not a one size fits all solution. You know, there's people that like to take profits when things are bullish. Um, and then when the price goes up, a lot of you know other people might make fun of them for for selling at lower prices but again you don't know the situation that the other person's in maybe you know they're saving for retirement maybe they're about to retire and they just don't want to take the risk and it's not worth it to them to you know to squeak out another 50 percent maybe they'd rather just take the profits because that's you know that's enough money for them to pay their house off with maybe it's enough money for them to pay their student loans off with so again i would encourage people as you navigate the market if people are taking profits at various phases um, that's not a bad thing, okay? It's certainly not a bad thing. And and one way to think about it is if you do take profits at various phases, uh, you can maybe get some of your liabilities taken care of in terms of like debt, and then you'll have more money to invest in the future in higher risk asset classes like cryptocurrency. Um, but anyways, right now you can see the risk has calmed down a lot. And, and you know, the, the, to go back up to these levels, the risk met, you know, we'd have to go like to four, you know, over four trillion I think, and the total cryptocurrency market capitalization today. But again, that's dynamic. It changes every single day. So remember, if you guys want to lock in the lower rate on the premium list, we're going to end that in about two days. So you can find the link to that in the description below. You can find a link to the sale. Make sure you guys check it out. Otherwise, at the very least, definitely subscribe to the channel. Let's go for half a million subscribers. Click the bell icon to turn on your notifications. And I will see you next time. Bye.